Welcome to the Con Kids Show, where we are reviewing Hawkeye on Disney+. Plus. This week, we tackle episode four called Partners, am I right? My name's Austin, and this week, we have two old guys as the guests, uh, the con guys. <laughs> We're just the grown-up South Park, Park versions of the other kids on the show. <laughs> We're just the old guys. I don't know if we can hang with the kids, that's for sure. Yeah, we'll see if you guys can. <laughs> yeah, we're here to be schooled by the kids. We're part of the con guys. I'm a cheeseman with the con guy.com and other things, the scare guy.com, which can be fun for kids too. Yeah, and I'm, I'm Jim. I am one of the con guys uh, at the con guy.com and the scare guys. Scare guy. What is it? Scare guys? The scare guy. The scared guy. scare guy. The scare guy.com. You think I would know that? And I'm also folding laundry because that's what adults do. They they fold their own laundry. So yeah. I can be an adult and finish folding my laundry. I got coffee. That's what adults do. <laughs> <laughs> Austin's going to be an embarrassment. So old. <laughs> I got the purple behind me, though, for Hawkeye. So I think that's the color of his suit. Yeah. So I'm excited to talk about Hawkeye tonight. You mean you don't just give the laundry to your mom and then have her take care of it? Well, I know Luke doesn't. <laughs> Luke's Wait, mom say? makes my laundry. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was good like that. It was good like that. I miss it. Well, Don't take it for granted. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. It takes forever. Yeah. Well, love your moms. moms. So before moms we start, we so before we start, you got Spider Man coming out next week. You guys excited for that? Oh, Depends yeah. Who I see it with. Oh What'd man, I wonder Luke? who it could be. Oh. <laughs> are you guys singing it together? We are. Sorry, nice. Jim, you're out for this one. I already saw it. I don't care. You saw like a early screening, so thank yes, you. but but I'm singing it next week. I'm I'm singing it next week as well. And you fell asleep during the movie. Uh, yeah, I I can't you really talk like about it years. enough. I can't talk about it at all because I signed my life away. But I can <laughs> say that people are going to be very excited. I can say that a lot of the um, theories, yeah. I think I personally can say that because what um, Kevin Feige at, over at Marvel Studios, he did announce, he, he made it official, Matt Murdock is part of the MCU. Oh, okay. okay. So I guess, is that, does that mean we, okay. Anyways, Matt Murdock is part of the MCU, hint, hint. Hope probably by next week. Hint, hint. <laughs> so now the question is, are all the other Marvel series that came out during that period of time on Netflix canon to the MCU? Or the, I bet yeah. you that... They made references to it, didn't yeah. they? Well, for I mean, we're going to talk about it here in just a second, but the big theory is, yeah, that the one that we're talking about tonight is about, has a big, a big reveal. From the Matt Murdock Daredevil series, so that's uh, according to Entertainment Weekly, that's going to happen. I don't know. So well, I, I will speak to that and say that I believe it is part of the MCU. And then with the start of Disney Plus, they stopped all their shows that were doing successful, like Daredevil, Jessica Jones. All those shows were like doing pretty decent, and the Defenders and all that. So I think Disney wanted to kind of bring it in into Disney plus and probably reevaluate things and stuff so they could make it kind of more combined once they took kind of more ownership of it from then once they took it away from Netflix. Oh yeah. They're absolutely coming in. The The Netflix shows are ab absolutely coming in. I mean, I daredevil. Like is absolutely Kid, coming you take in. it from YouTube and now it's on Netflix. So you're just it's not, Netflix. I think daredevil is absolutely coming into the MCU. It's, it's going to be part. It's Canon. Uh, I don't, don't know about Jessica Jones. Even though I love that one. Yeah, they I'm might sorry. have to dial it down a little bit with that. <laughs> <laughs> What's Weird that? Grandma. They might have to dial down a little bit of the, you know. Yeah, Jessica Jones was a bit adult, way adult in some of the parts. I don't think Disney Plus is going to ha be having that on there. But maybe Hulu. Who knows? Maybe those shows come over to Hulu. Ooh, true. That'd be interesting. That would be real interesting, actually. Hmm. <laughs> so this week we're reviewing week four. Um you guys kind of just hopping in. Me, Aaron, and Daniel have been talking about it a little bit. Um, what did you guys think of the episode? I really like the series so far. I think they've done a really good job on this. It's a lot of fun. Like, I'm a big fan of Shane Black movies, who's done, like, the Lethal Weapon movies, Kiss Kiss, Bang Bang, and 
Uh, he did, you know, the newest Predator, which I think I saw. It was it was supposedly really bad. I think I saw some of it, but um, he's usually like I like his style, and he throws a lot of like Christmas in and a lot of Buddy Banner, and I think this really has that. And one of my favorite things about you know Kate is that she's like very. I'm saying the kids' version tough. Uh, really can beat people up. And but she's a very kind of like girly girl, too, which is kind of cool that they're throwing that in there, that she could still be a girl, but still can kick butt. How about that? That's the way to say it in the PG version. Yeah, I am. Um, I have to say that so far, this is my favorite of the Marvel series that have come on Disney Plus. It's I, I really am enjoying this series. Um, I'm enjoying the, the action sequences, are, which are fantastic. I think last week's car, was it last week or the week before? The car scene, the car chase, and shooting out the car and blowing. That was oh, yeah. top-notch action. That one was probably as, about as good as it gets. And this week, they had um, you know the fight out on, on top of the roof, which was okay, good. It was pretty good, but I, that one could have been better, but... I agree with Luke. I like the humor. The humor in this is really making it stand out. And well, yes, the problem is we got Shang Chi to compete with now because Shang Chi's fight scene and the and the bus scene were so good that people. Oh, are I know. Comparing. It's hard to compete against that one. But the the one thing that I that I started to drift off. That at first I was like, wow, there was a long scene in the middle of this episode where it was just it felt like just sitting and talking and chatting when. When Kate goes back and to the, sleep? the ugly sweater contest, I guess, in Clint's apartment. But that scene turned out to be pretty significant, pretty uh, poignant. It's a we, when we got to see that Clint was really still so messed up and like and rightly so about losing his best friend and comrade, um, you know, the Black Widow, Natasha. That was that was a, a, a touching scene to see that, you know, what was the best shot you've ever had? It was the one I didn't take. Yeah, because he didn't kill her. That's some, that's some, that was some great storytelling right there. That I didn't, I was, I, and I didn't get bored with it. I, I really loved it, and um, and then it got even better. So that was good stuff. And did you notice how they kept dropping in the musical theme from when Natasha jumped off the cliff in Endgame, and you could hear that a couple of times when Clint was talking when he was remembering things. Like there was a scene when Kate Bishop was hanging over the side about to drop to her death, not really, but a drop, about to drop off the side of a building and Clint was holding on. It was the exact same, it was the recreation of the scene when he was holding on to Natasha when she was about to fall and that music started playing. And then at that moment, that's when Clint's like, I'm not going to let you die. And he, then he did drop her into all those Christmas lights, but still. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can find awesome. the series in one shot. It's all this backwards falling stuff. <laughs> yeah, so keep doing that shot yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't think this is my favorite but i think loki by far is the best one yeah it's hard um, to be loki yeah loki is fantastic i mean this one's good but i mean it's better than yet um honestly i think it's better than what if it's better than um wandavision is better than falcon Mm -hmm. but Loki, you can't really beat Loki like that. It was different every single time, but it was oh, like, yes, so I do agree so much information. I'm going to push back on that <laughs> one. I loved Loki. Absolutely loved Loki. But the one thing this one has that, that I think sets it apart for me is that it feels a little bit more real world. Whereas the Loki one felt like just this weird psycho babble dream up in some cosmic, some, I I still have no idea. I I I don't know. Did I don't have a good clue about like what actually he saw? This con kid could probably answer your question. Yeah. Yeah. What did, yeah. Let me ask you. What do you think about like? Did they actually split the universes? Split the timelines? Yeah, all the timelines are out right now. There's a yeah. big theory going out there that a lot of the next, like a lot of the big events that have happened in like series and movies are like all at the same time. So like when uh Kang's like we've passed the um the nexus, I don't know what he said, like past whatever point, they're saying that that's exactly aligned with Doctor Strange's spell and WandaVision's glare up into the sky at the end of um well, Wanda's glare at WandaVision. Like when he she hears her kids oh, through the yeah. multiverse. 
Yeah, yeah. So that's the big theory I've been seeing around. Like, if you time it upright, it seems almost real. So, right. I think, yeah, I think he got, like, transported to another multiverse or something. I don't understand how they're doing with time. That's interesting, because I, I, I do know... Ha- Having seen the next Spider-Man movie, it's definitely about the multiverse in a big, big way in different timelines. Loki was. This one, yeah, it, that's that is interesting. Why are we talking about? Well, can we start? Can we start talk by talking about where the end of last episode ended and the beginning of this one? With oh yeah, and this was the Ronin sword. Am I correct? Yeah. The actual sword was there. So tell us uh, what happened, Austin. Um, well, it seems like once he saw who it was, he was like, oh, okay. Like almost like he laid down arms, but it's still unknown whether he knows how to carry a blade or not. Like sure, he knows how to fence and all that other stuff, but, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but it seems like he has a lot of... Did it be a showdown or did were you surprised that they're just kind of like Luke skywalker it where they're just like, oh, eh, it's, we're fine. Uh, let's go, sit down and have dinner. Yeah, no, it was a letdown. Yeah. Um, it's, it's confusing too. Like now that we know that um, Jack's like a part of the jumpsuit gang, I think he's like the head or something. Like it definitely opens up a lot more like the possibilities. Yeah, which I've heard in previous shows, you guys are kind of like, I like them, and I don't, they're kind of annoying, uh, but they're awesome, I, I don't know. <laughs> how, yeah. how do you feel currently about the Jumpsuit Gang? I don't know, they're they're pretty annoying, I'm not going to lie. Like, um, the one guy who's kind of cool is the um, the one they visited this episode, mm-hmm. the dude in the car. Brother. Um, Yeah, no, he was pretty cool, but other than that, like, they're all pretty annoying. Like, even the mute chicks kind of being aggravating where it's like, I must have vengeance for my uncle. Okay. That, it's been done a lot of times in the MCU. Like Killmonger yeah. already did that. Mm-hmm. Did Luke tell you that we, we're friends with the, the tallest of the, uh, the track suit mafia guys. His name's Alex. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah we, he's, we a, know him. he's a really good guy. We're not quite friends with him yet, but he, he's friends with one of our friends and we've, we've hung out with him at Comic-Con. We hang out with them at Comic-Cons. We're Comic Con. If you hung out with someone at Comic Con, that means you're best friends. On up, your best friends. <laughs> well, he's. It's not like he's going to come change my tire or my car if I'm broken down the side of the road. But we know him. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. He, he'd probably be quick, and people wouldn't get in our way because he's a big so, guy. So, Austin, you were talking about the tracksuit mafia. Do you you kind of you guys aren't really big fans of them? You don't think they're like a a, a good enough villain? No, they're definitely not a good enough villain. I think they're more like the henchmen that you see in like the old Disney films. <laughs> like, you know, Hercules, um, and I don't even know what other ones to mention. But, you know, I think they're like the goofiness to the big villain, which we're hoping to be Kingpin. I think it is Kingpin. And this week, Entertainment Weekly said time. the same thing. They are convinced that it is Kingpin. Wow, that would yeah. be really cool. But if it's Kingpin, that definitely brings in Daredevil. And that definitely means that since Matt Murdock is, according to Kevin Feige, there we go, according to Kevin Feige appearing in the next Spider-Man, if that's all true, then, yeah, the multiverse is really coming together here for Marvel. I love that. Yeah, no, it's amazing. But here's what I – let me ask you this, Austin. Do you think – what do you think about the mom? The mom. I was character. actually just about to ask you that. Um, yeah. I don't know. I still hold by my theory that she's Kingpin's daughter. Like, I feel like that would be a really good story plot and also kind of predictable, too. Because uh, they've done that in, you know, just storytelling in general. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it's the daughter and that's like it, her source and that's how Jack and her med and whatever. I mean, I'd, or maybe she, I don't know. I feel like she's somehow her like sister maybe. Cause like he dates women that are kind of like, you know, around the same age bracket of her, a kingpin, at least in, you know, and she's, you know, she's probably in her th- late thirties or something. And kingpins, what, probably late forties. So I don't, she might be a little, it might not be the same age bracket to be her daughter. Oh yeah. Maybe. Si- yeah. Sister then. I, I don't, I haven't seen the, daredevil series i don't know how old he is 
I think Kingman's older than 40s. He's pushing he's pushing 60, dude. Okay. Yeah. Well, she still looks kind of older too. So yeah, I, she does. Yeah. She does she's related. Pretty. But yeah. I think, think I I think they're related somehow. Do you think you know oh. because what was it we found out about Jack? What if Kate was his daughter? Yes. Hmm. That would be interesting. Because who no, 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 because we saw Kate's dad, didn't we? Yeah, yeah but we what did. if that's not his dad? What if it's all a lie? Well, I don't think Jack, who is the step, the soon to be stepdad, or the you know the guy with the the Ronin sword. I honestly don't. Um, hold on a second, my computer wants to reboot. Nope, I don't think. I my theory is that he's not really a bad guy. He doesn't know what's going on. I think he's being used. I think that's why the mom character is with him. I think the mom character is responsible for what's going bad. I think she's the big bad. And I think it's, or she's pulling the strings for Kingpin. Something, I think she's involved. Because did you notice how she was pretending? I mean, she wasn't pretending. She was like very concerned for her daughter. But she went up to Clint and she was like, can you please drop this case? Why would she say that? Yeah. Did, and she made the phone she... call too after he left. Did you see Wait. that? Oh, well, no, I didn't see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah um so after hawkeye left she gave a call but it like went to voicemail or something it's like hey i gotta talk to you um mm-hmm. yeah. like i gotta talk to you right away yeah i think so it's her powerful friend what do you think luke you haven't said too much yeah i think the kingpin thing could be that and also with the uh, falcon winter soldier um what's her name the daughter of Captain America's lady. I know Agent 13. Oh, what was it? I'm sorry, what'd you say? You know, at the end of, you know, Cap, um, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, you know, they had Sharon Carter, you know, the, the daughter, you know, like, or the granddaughter. I wonder if she could be involved somehow. Because she's kind of like, you know, they set her up as kind of being in some shady deals or something. Or what if it is just um, Val? You know, Julia Louise Dreyfus, Julia Louis Dreyfus. What if it's her character? Because oh yeah, I'll let you guys talk about the big reveal which happened this episode. I think Austin should talk uh, about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm blushing. Uh, oh man, I can't. Yeah, my Marvel Cinematic crush finally made her appearance. Thank oh, you, yeah? Lord. <laughs> oh man, my goodness, yes, Elena. Um, her, her like quote unquote sister. Uh, made her appearance after fighting um, Hawkeye, tr- assassinating or trying to assassinate. It didn't really seem like she was trying to kill him, but or she was. It just seemed like a very drawn out way. But she made her appearance. Thank you, Kevin Feige. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Florence Pugh. I really do. I like her character a lot. Yeah, what's well, interesting how quick kind of the fight was. I don't know. Like maybe she felt like double team by like having both of them there, you know, Kate there as backup or I don't know, something or cause yeah, the way they set it up, you know, at the end of black widows, like she was going to go after Clint and try to slash Hawkeye and try to kill him because Val said that she was, that he was responsible for her sister's death and stuff. So that's why she's there and all that. And then, yeah, it's, and then it seemed like someone hired her. So is it, it's not the new, it's not the villain we've been seeing that hired her. Because they were both fighting them. Are they coming from separate kind of things, both trying to fight Hawkeye slash the Ronin situation? It felt like it. She's after Hawkeye and the other lady's after um, Ronin. Yep. Yeah, no, it definitely seemed kind of weird. I couldn't tell whether they were working together or mm-hmm. fighting this. Like, it was weird. Well, because the one, it's because Echo, the, the other lady, the, the, the actress who's deaf echo she kicked yeah her she didn't she she kicked yelena in the head while they were fighting and she broke up the fight for a second right there as all right i gotta ask you guys a question austin what did you think this is your big crush did you think it what and why did they keep her covered up for so long don't you think this fight would have been so much better if we knew who he was fighting instead of like Dun, dun, dun. Here's the big reveal. It it surprised me. I didn't know who it was. Really? 
No, I didn't. I didn't know who it was. Like, I didn't. I forgot about the end of Black Widow. And then Luke goes, oh, yeah, I knew who it was. And Luke and Luke was sitting there saying, I know who this is. I'm like, who is this? I know it's it was a woman. Because I knew she was going to come into the series because of the end of Black Widow, how they set it up. So I haven't I been keeping up for the that. moment. Yeah. When you have this mystery fi a figure that looks like a foot soldier from Ninja Turtles, you know, you, <laughs> oh, she you just got to suspect it's got to be here. Well, as a man, you notice the figures of people at times. I'm sorry, this is a kid's show, but it was easy to tell that it was a woman fighting. So especially when I saw that. Why? Because was she was shorter? Curvier. <laughs> 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 well, he also said it's a chick when he was fighting her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 There's but... No, but I think real, I what do it. you think? Do you think it would have been better if we knew who he was fighting? No, I think it was good with the whole superstition thing. It's kind of like what I feel like Marvel is doing with like a lot of their other films where it's like this theory. Like you, you have a quick little theory moment where, you know, you spend like two, three minutes just thinking about, OK, is this it? Like you're doubting yourself. It's like, OK, yeah. could this be someone else? And then your first theory is right. That's a good point. And are they maybe with her costume kind of tying it together to Black Widow? Because there was that other character that was fighting them that would mimic your moves and all that. And they had kind of more that full body kind of hidden costume kind of similar to that. So Task did she kind of take maybe that kind of a role after Black Widow? Because, you know, we haven't seen her for years of what happened during that period of time and everything. I mean, we saw her at the grave site. You know, that was the only thing between kind of the two things we really have the connection for. So. We don't know, like with you know Hawkeye and the Ronin outfit, if she did something kind of similar, developed some sort of black ops kind of costume. Hmm. I have a theory. I think it's just because it's easier to find a stunt actress when you don't <laughs> to do all the moves, you, you know. So the the costume was easy to conceal the fact that there wasn't really Florence Pugh fighting; it was somebody else. We didn't; it wasn't really Florence Pugh to pull the mask off. Yeah, it's a it's a silly thing, but no, I look. I don't know, like how soon I have to get Jim for Christmas. It's this costume. <laughs> it looks like the it almost looks like the thing from American Horror Story that that season one. But um, yeah, another Disney property. <laughs> oh, now it is. Yeah, it is. I don't know. She's a she's an assassin kind of ninja personality. Like she's a Black Widow, so. I mean, it'd be appropriate if she was wearing night vision goggles and all black. Yeah. It didn't bother me. <laughs> oh, and it, it, it didn't bother me. I, I didn't think. I loved it. I loved the scene. And um, I, and I watched it with Luke. And I'm like, loved it. Just absolutely loved it. I loved the sweater stuff. I loved the Christmassy stuff. I don't know. Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk some costume stuff. What, what do we think of this? How they're kind of tying in the... Uh... Oh, wait a second. This is the wrong picture. I am that's, so sorry, I, everybody. No worries. That's last this week. Be, hang tight. Okay, here we go. Here's the right picture. So, yeah, <laughs> like how they're hanging out with the fencing or the... The, the LARPers. The LARPers and all that. That's Large then, action then role play. Costumes. Yeah. Large action? What is it? Wait, no. <laughs> what's, a, what's a LARPer? <laughs> Live action role play. Live action, not large action. Yeah, it's just for big people. <laughs> <laughs> Just Kingpin. I, I think they'll kind of come to their rescue at the end because I feel like this character, this is the second time we've seen him, and he was kind of like, well, you owe me one or I owe you one. I forget what he said kind of the first time they kind of connected with Hawkeye. So I have a feeling that they may show up and kind of play into a final showdown at the end. Yeah. Well, they are making their costumes, so. Yeah. yeah. Why not make one for themselves? Yeah, huh. for sure. And speaking of other costumes, Jim kind of mentioned this. Uh, How would you guys feel about the ugly Christmas sweaters? I loved it. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah, I really like how it's coming out this time of the year and that they're kind of throwing in some of this, you know, the Christmas vibe to the whole thing, which is really cool. And, you know, it, what I kind of realized more kind of in this episode is that, you know, Hawkeye – you know, like, because before I'm like, oh, Kate's just making him be here because he's trying to get her uninvolved. But he's also wanting to kind of close the he knows people are there after the Ronin situation. And he kind of it's like, I need to stop this Ronin situation so it doesn't, you know, affect my life, which we found out more in this episode. Like, especially when there was a list in the apartment of his family and all that that was found. 
this like almost hit list kind of thing. So now like he's really got, has to solve this before going home for Christmas. And it isn't just, he's ditching his family. He's trying to protect them in this process. Yeah. Hey, can I have a question? What is up with the, the, the watch? Yeah, no, what, um, what for sure. That? They mentioned it again, this episode. Um, that's what they're looking for. Cool. Yeah. Is it this? We'll, we'll go to the watch first. <laughs> Yeah, well, most likely it belongs to Tony Stark, but it sounds like it could connect Ronin to Hawkeye. Hmm. Maybe it's a record, like a video camera that just has him unmasking or something. Hmm. So, but so that's the one thing that the tracksuit mafia wanted when they broke in and they were smashing things up. All they wanted was the watch, and then I wonder what they want it for. Like, what is that watch about? I'm trying to trying to look online right now to see what other people are saying. My theory is that, yeah, it's attached to the Iron Man thing. And I think it's going to involve the next kind of younger Iron Man as they're building kind of the young Avengers and stuff. I feel like since they're probably going to be tying the, these series together, you know, the Hawkeye series, She-Hulk and Miss Marvel and all that kind of stuff, I think that, you know, this might be tying in the, be the beginnings of what the Iron Man character will be in all this. Yeah. No, I, I, like I did in the last episode, I mentioned the theory about what if the watch contained Friday? Because Friday just disappeared whenever Tony yeah. Stark did, which is like really weird. Like it's really weird that she's just gone. So it'd be kind of cool, like since he brought his AIs everywhere, if the watch has Friday in it. And Friday wow. knows everything. Yeah, yeah. That would very, I would love that. Because we know that one of the new series coming out is is it Iron Heart, which yeah. is the, the, the young girl, the teenage girl who builds her own suit of armor, but it's powered the it's powered, I guess, either by Friday or by Tony Stark's AI that he created. So that would make a lot of sense if that's the case. What if it is that? There's another like Clint did say something that leads us a, gives us a little bit of a clue. Because he calls his wife Laura, and then she tracks it down. She's the one who tracks down the information, which is kind of odd. How did how was she able to do that? And hmm. so some people are speculating she was once a field agent of some sort, um, which is how they met. And because Clint does say, well, he goes, da, 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 the Rolex, the Rolex strong. It's da, 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 da. I was just reading here <laughs> that if it burns the 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 Rolex could burn the identity of somebody that he's close to. So something about there's somebody's identity that he's trying to protect. You guys keep talking while I try to find what I was talking about. It's very true. Um, something also with the identity thing is um, secret invasions coming up before it's terribly long with the whole scroll thing. So maybe it has something to do with that, that as well. Hmm. Interesting. I like shot, that. But... I mean, I am... it... go ahead. Oh, no, I was just finishing up saying, like, that would be interesting. I'm super stoked about Secret Invasion. I am super stoked about that one. Yeah, yes. no, for sure. So, Austin, with you doing card tricks, do you feel like you're going to start doing this coin trick? <laughs> I've seen um, you do a card trick. No really. um, yeah, I don't know. I I'll see if I can do it. Like, I, I used to be able to throw a card, like, really hard at people. Like, um, Whenever I'd want to like annoy my sisters, I'd take it out and just pelt them because they can never throw it back. Like they'd throw it, pedal down. <laughs> Until little, adults too. started threatening you with punishment. Oh, they did. It got bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sweet grandma was like, if you throw another card, I'm not getting you a present. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, you, you know how to do like the cards where you hit people with them? Oh, yeah. Um, take your two fingers, like a, like two, put them together and just flick it. <laughs> oh, isn't good. there like some superhero really villain that we cut things in half by hurling cards at him? I think there is. I don't, I don't remember who that Gambit? is. Gambit? Is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, first appeared in X Men. I think it was Origins, right? Or was it Wolverine? No, it was, was Origins. Put, you're putting me to shame. You're putting me to shame. I don't know. <laughs> it's Origins, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Origins. Hey, can I, I remember... ask you a question? Because this one, this is kind of why is it that Clint is partnering up with Kate. I mean, she's kind of forcing it on him, I think. But like what is 
the deal with that? Like, is it is it right? Because he is endangering her life. I think he might be struggling with that. Hmm. What do you think, Luke? Um, I think he's reluctant, reluctantly doing it. I don't think he really wants to, but he keeps feeling kind of an obligation to protect her because, again, which I realized more on this episode than the other ones, because before I'm just like, oh, like he should just take her to their Christmas or something or do something. I don't know, like something that like, why does he keep staying around or whatever? But and like, oh, it's her fault or whatever. But then I, he feels like it's his fault that he started this whole Ronin mess. And that's why he's so kind of like he doesn't want someone to get hurt because of the stuff he did when he was Ronin. And that's why he's kind of reluct reluctantly kind of going about this whole thing. And then, but he wants back with his family as soon as he can, but he can't feels like he can't leave till he, at least no one's in danger, including himself and his family. Yeah. Hmm. Her playful banter also reminds me of um, Black Widow. So maybe that is like a psychological. Well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there's like I can't help to think like all these like people he's kind of with and these things like oh maybe he's gonna have a and I'm like oh wait he's married and has kids never mind but but mind. he has a his best friend was Natasha you know what yeah. if Pete's kind of sort of halfway replacing that even though there's an inappropriate age difference hey, look guys and girls can be just friends <laughs> yeah Black Widow and Hawkeye can prove the you impossible. mentioned the, the family being in danger though did you guys notice she found the list. Somebody's keeping a list of Clint's family, his wife and his kids. What do you think about that? And what was that about? Like when she, she, right when she was going in to get the watch, she was sneaking around in the apartment. She found a note. Yeah, there's a hit list on his family. There was a hit stuff. list. Somebody was taking notes and finding out the location of his family or taking, finding out about his family. And so. Whoever, whose apartment were they in? Were Echoes. They in Echoes. That was Echo's apartment, right? Yeah. Hmm. I so think she, so. Unless, unless that was uh, the Black Widow's one. I, I don't know. Or you know the. No, I was kind of was, a little confused Atlanta. about whose apartment it was exactly, but I noticed. Yeah, the list. So now he's. It like, was I Maya's apartment. Know. Yeah, that's Echo. Like Who is Echo? Maya is Echo. Okay. And they were looking for the Rolo the Rolex from the Avengers compound. Rolex. <laughs> Already talking like an idiot, like an old man. <laughs> <laughs> it's past my bedtime. That's my pole cast. <laughs> no, but that it was Maya's apartment. They were looking for the Rolex, and they while she found the Rolex, she also found a list that my apparently that Maya had. <clears throat> excuse me, where she was searching Clint's family, which is pretty bad. That means that the it looks like a hit list. They're going after his family for some reason. Yeah. I wonder if that's in like retaliation to like when she saw Hawkeye um, come after her. So now in like response to that, he's doing that. Well, she's going after his family to maybe get information on Ronan as like blackmail. So correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't. Yeah. Clint finally admitted to Kate, right? Yeah. That well, he she was found wrong. out. That was heavy. <laughs> yeah. That was heavy. Maybe Winter Soldier went dark again. You know how he likes to make his lists. Oh, yeah. Bucky. Bucky has his little list of people, but now nah, he's he's a good man now. Yeah. Well, he's trying so hard to be like Hawkeye is trying so hard to be like this like deep, like dark character. Like it seems like. And Kate's like constantly telling him, You're you know, that that's not your place. <laughs> So, like, it's pretty funny. Like, it's like a kid, you know, begging on his dad, like, hey, dad, let's do this. I can, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah he, <laughs> he's a little grumpy with his hearing aid now. And all of his, uh, like, meds, he has to go to CVS, like, once a day. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Or yeah. did you see how he uh, treated all of his sore muscles? He gets his CVS points. Oh, yeah. It was funny how he had to tape all the frozen food on his arms and his everywhere that he was having muscles and bruises. Yeah, yeah. You can see how old he's becoming. 
Just like the con, just like the con guys. <laughs> Luke, hey. you had to put frozen food on you. Don't don't make us white fang you, and then we'll we'll be like, we got this covered. You got to go home. It's too dangerous. The show's too dangerous for you, Austin. <laughs> yeah, take the channel away. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you? I have a question, and I've always kind of wondered this, and I guess this is just the restraints of production. Why doesn't Hawkeye like, I don't know. Why does he call Bucky or call C Captain America and say, Hey, I need some help here. Or, or call. Well, I, I don't know who else is left to call. Cause they're all kind of the, I know the superheroes are kind of, the adventures are kind of like filtering out. Thor's taking off on a spaceship. I can tell you why Jim. Ant-Man. He could. What am I? What's what's? Do you Ant know how doing? long Hawkeye has waited for his moment? Do you know how long he's waited to like? I have a costume. I have a uniform. I get my own movie. It's because he's had to wait this long. And you want one of them to show up, and then now they get Captain America four or five or Thor eight seven. You know, you know, Hawkeye wants his moment to shine, Jim. <laughs> really, really though. I guess because everybody died at the all of his closest comrades died in Endgame or ceased to be superheroes. Natasha, Tony, Cap, um, Steve Rogers, and then um, Wanda is having some some issues right now, as we know. And then it just leaves Bucky and uh, the new Captain America Falcon, oh. really, and then and Ant Man. You know what's really weird? They're in New York. You know who should be there? Spider Man. Get out. Like if it depends what happens in this movie, obviously, because it happened right after the blip. The, well, the movie. After. Well, let me tell you, the movie explains all that. So the movie does uh, explain that. Where I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Then never mind. <laughs> no, but that's a good point, though. He should like, yeah. What? Well, well, but. Huh. The real reason I think is because yeah. he's kind of this lone wolf kind of guy, and Black Widow is kind of the same way. They don't like asking for help. They're like, yeah, that's just not their way. Kind of like the whole Ronan thing he went on as a lone wolf doing this. Like he kind of sometimes, and especially if he's feeling like self conflicted about stuff, like he's very just by himself and wants to take care of things himself and not get anybody else hurt in the process. Yeah, yeah, sounds about right. Or, I wonder if they'll go back and... Doctor Strange is in New York? <laughs> True. Now that you really? said that, I'm sorry, I'm stuck on this one now. Why is he not getting help from people? Who else is in New York? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Wong's there. It's like Blue's Clues going on. Like This person's in New York and this person. How many he hasn't met Shang-Chi yet, but they'd get along well. <laughs> but that's San Francisco, though. Okay. Yeah, they got spread out. They got spread out the hero somewhat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, have you um, are you aware? Have you heard about the Young Avengers? Uh, yeah, I've heard that they're trying to assemble them. And it can be seen a little bit. Like yeah. we touched about that on, I think, like our first episode. Oh yeah. Who are? Yeah. Because it's I, Kate's going to be one of them, right? Yeah. Uh, Kate's looking to be one of them. Another one being um, Isaiah Bradley, possibly. Wait, not Isaiah Bradley. Um, the son. His son. Yeah, like the the young guy that was in it. That would be cool. Or his grand? Um, was it his grandson? I think probably. I don't remember. Probably. I don't know yeah. if he's a superhero. He probably could pull a lady uh, that's a little <laughs> younger than him. Pull a little Donald Trump action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I do have to say this. Uh, I noticed in this particular episode that um, there was kind of like a Home Alone type homage, the scene that she's kind of on the wire sliding a clock crossed and kind of wide faced and kind of stuck in the middle that did feel kind of like a Home Alone moment. So I feel like that was kind of with, you know, 20th Century Fox being kind of Attached to the Disney company, I feel like that might have been on purpose. True. 
Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love that though. That's I, I love the Christmas, the stuff they put. It's like the end of every show. There's a new Christmas song, a new animation. I I I mean the end of every episode. Yeah. It's, I think it's great. Yeah. It's funny to see how many like Christmas things that Marvel's kind of doing. Like they did Iron Man 3, which is around Christmas. They're doing this. They're planning on doing Guardians of the Galaxy, the hol- holiday special, I think, next year. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 I think Where's they're actually it? filming that right now. Hmm. Nice. Where's the other holidays? <laughs> well, I um yeah. Didn't they have um no they did not. <laughs> <laughs> well as we wrap up Sorry. Where, where do we see kind of this going at you know especially with you know the new character and with Hawkeye you know because this is what they kind of build up at the end of Black Widow so it's kind of a big deal so like Austin do you have any kind of theories on this um honestly I feel like I feel like Hawkeye's going to get exposed. I think Clint's going to be exposed for being Ronan, either by himself or by the internet. Maybe like the way Mysterio exposed um, Spider-Man. Um, that'd be an interesting one for sure. Um, I think the mom might die. And you just Ooh. want a lot of screen time of her too. Oh, please, please, Lord. Please, <laughs> oh, Lord, Kevin Feige. <laughs> but yeah. Maybe she'll get her own series. Oh, get your that'd be so good. That'd be so good. That would so the mom character, Vera Farmiga, her name's Eleanor, right? That's the mom. Yeah. Okay. You think she might die? I think she's gonna pass. I Better think Jack. I think you're right. Yeah. Or think about it. maybe the dad will be revealed because he disappeared. He didn't die, he disappeared. Didn't he get like? Well, they went to his funeral. Staged. Yeah, like what happened to him? Did like part of this the ceiling fall on him or something? Is that what it was? When you see him and then New York. Yeah, because you see her scrambling around, and the only person to come to her is her mom, and they like bolted out of the building. The next thing you know, you're at the funeral. Huh. What if he's the thing? Kingpin. What if this was a thing from uh, Fantastic Four or something? How did he become? He flew into outer space on a space flight and got hit with cosmic rays. So, okay, <laughs> be interesting. Yeah, he somehow. He oh, I, they are about to somehow Locked find a way to involve Fantastic Four in all this. Oh, jeez. So, so Austin, I guess anymore. it's up to you and me to end the show, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Austin, this has been fun. Thank you for inviting us on this week. I feel privileged. I feel a yeah, little bit. Thank you for coming. I feel a little bit old. Like even Luke <laughs> is on Grandpa Internet there. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, Austin, thank you for coming on. Uh, I mean, coming on. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, yeah, Jim. thank you for coming on. <laughs> you can find me at James D. Fry on Instagram, Jim Fry LA on Twitter, but just follow us at theconguy.com. But of course, this guy, Austin, I want you, this is the the podcast that uh, that I'm really excited about. You guys are doing such a good job. I, I enjoy watching you guys' shows. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, you can find our podcast on Instagram at the Con Kids. You can find us on YouTube and uh, your guys' YouTube. Um, eventually, if I figure out how to work it, I know I'm kind of feeling old now too, but TikTok, <laughs> and then yeah, you can see us there. And then you got my personal account there. Cool, that's your that's your Instagram. Uh, yeah, it's my Instagram. All right, TikTok, huh? So you're gonna have to start dancing. Oh, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's gonna be some whole like me and Aaron passing along, kind of like an office style, yeah. All right, I hear something coming up. The, um, so, good to see you, Austin. I'll let you take us out of here then. All righty, thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody, for logging on to this week. Uh, tune in next week to see our next episode on episode five of Hawkeye. And uh, we'll eventually do a Spider-Man review either next week or the week after that. We'll see what happens. 
Oh, we can finally see what, you know, Jim's been giggling about in the background. I can't wait. So aggravating. I can't wait to talk about it. Yeah. So thank you, and we'll see you next time. See ya.